All right, what's going on, guys? So yesterday, Deserto released an article where they did a little interview with two of the lead developers for Infinity Ward about some of the thought process behind the Modern Warfare 2 map design. I thought their responses were kind of interesting, so I just wanted to share it with you guys because it is nice to get some insight into how the developers are thinking. Even though we may or may not agree with everything, it is good to know at least so I thought it was worth taking a look at so basically they kind of just asked them what the thought process was behind map design and decisions in Modern Warfare 2 and this was their answer we use TDM S&D and DOM as kind of the scaffolding Smith echoed the other ones we kind of do the best we can to fit them in there's a lot of different game modes that fit in there but as long as we hit those three those are the big three that engage the most. We kind of make do with the others. So basically they said they only think about TDM, DOM, and S&D when they're designing the maps. And they just fit the other game modes in afterwards, which is kind of hilarious. It's kind of unfortunate that Hardpoint, the most competitive, like probably most fun mode, just gets spent bit on and they don't care about it at all. I think that's a bit of a mistake. They should at least add that into the list. But I don't even necessarily think that's a crazy thought process. It does confirm that the game is 100% designed for casuals, which I think we all knew that. I mean, as soon as I played the beta for this game, that was my immediate conclusion after only playing it for, you know, a couple days or whatever, like I could immediately tell. But I want to dive deeper into it, right? Because number one, I don't think designing a map for TDM really makes any sense, right? Because TDM works on any map, basically. Like, it doesn't really matter. The only thing that kind of makes a bad map for TDM is if it's too big. It should never feel, like, boring and, and too slow-paced. You should never hit the time limit in TDM. Like, you should always reach the kills, but there has been a handful of maps over the years where you do actually hit the time limit quite often because the map is so big or it's just maybe, like, a little too campy, and people already tend to camp in TDM to begin with with so like it just gets really like boring and terrible but honestly most big maps in Call of Duty are terrible especially because they keep trying to force 6v6 on them and it just becomes like very slow and boring but I don't think TDM really should be a factor at all in map design you know it, it just doesn't really make sense I get it's the most popular mode you know and honestly I think the only reason it's the most popular mode is because it's always been the first mode on the list when you search for a game so a lot of like these casuals never even try out a different mode because they don't even realize like there's other shit in there you know what I mean if they would actually like rotate the modes you know like every like two weeks every month or something there's a new mode at the top of the list I guarantee you the population will be more spread out but I just think it's kind of pointless to worry about the map design for TDM you know what I mean like it's it's kind of hard to mess that up but they did say they focused on S&D and DOM which I do think is actually important important right those are two of the most popular objective game modes but dom as well is kind of pointless to focus on because the home flags are self-explanatory a and c are going to be on the opposite sides of the map one in each spawn it doesn't even really matter that much where you place those two the b flag is the only flag that actually requires some thought and for the most part, it's hard to even mess that up, right? Like, you just put it somewhere in the middle of the map where it's fair for both sides to capture it. But I do have to say, sometimes they even mess that up. Like, for example, if you look at where the B flag is on Expo, the placement just doesn't make sense, man. Like, the A side team has a huge advantage. B is, like, right next to it off spawn. Whereas they easily could push it more further up into the middle of the map. If you've ever played Expo, like, they don't have to put it on the stage like they can move it somewhere else but I just think it's crazy that they say they're focusing on domination as one of the key modes for their map design and everything and then they put the B flag in such a terrible spot is absurd right like you're saying that that's your best work like you tried your hardest and that's what you fucking came up with man like come on dude like I would understand if maybe you just didn't give a fuck you don't care you put two seconds of thought into it say yeah okay just put it right there who cares right that makes sense but to say like you were actually trying your hardest and that's the best 
placement you came up with is actually hilarious. But I don't want to harp on Dom too much because for the most part, it's fine. There's just a few like bad B flag placements or whatever. Okay, cool, whatever. S and D is what we really want to talk about. I don't know the player population counts for pubs. Like they started hiding that a long time ago, but I would guess S and D is probably the second most popular game mode for pubs. It's a staple in Call of Duty, right? Like it's a key game mode for Call of Duty. A lot of people like purely only play S and D, right? So it's very important. So I just want to read this little quick segment they had to say about S and D. Cods always had asymmetrical maps, and that's really healthy. Cod said players fight over those hot spots. You guys look a lot at in S and D time to the bomb site. Are the attackers getting there first? Are the defenders? What does it mean to rotate? You talk about how the map plays initially as you go to defend the bombs this way, but then when one team plants, the map now plays sideways, and you look at exactly how the map supports it. Can it play that well? So I think in that way, we support that competitive layer and make sure the map's functional in that way. Then the other part of the CDL stuff is the things that are more random. We pull out, so it's less experiential and more competitive, more about your gun. The combination of those two gets us to a really good place in that format. So a lot of words there. I mean, it sounds good. It sounds like they're doing some in-depth analysis of the map and stuff to design it for s and like, you know, where they put the bomb sites and everything. That makes sense. It seems like s and is definitely a focus for them because that was by far their most in-depth answer about anything. But it's funny to me because this game has some of the worst bomb site placements I've ever seen in Call of Duty, man. Which is crazy because based off of everything that they're saying, it seems like they're focusing on this the most, but somehow it's one of the worst. Like, how does that happen? I don't, I don't get it, man. Like, let me give you a couple examples. Let's start with Fortress. This is great because Fortress is actually a competitive map and it's probably one of the worst s and map bomb site placements I've ever seen in the history of Call of Duty because you can only go A. B is in such a terrible spot and it's so close to the defense spawn that it's basically impossible for the offense to go B off the start of the round. So like in a pro match when you actually have a full team and everything's coordinated and watching everything, I don't think a team has gone B off the start of the round one time the entire year in the hundreds of you know rounds that have been played you literally can't go B. The only time you can go B is if you're rotating off like a 2v2, 1v2, 1v1, something like that. If you have numbers, something like that, you can just rotate it to B or whatever. But you're not going to just hit B off the start of the round. It's actually like impossible. Even in ranked play, for those of you that play ranked or play competitive at all, even in ranked, people don't go B. Like here and there, you can sneak in a B because like it's ranked, there's randoms, like people aren't like setting up and crazy shit like that for the most part. So like you can go B rarely, but even then in ranked, people are going A. They don't even try try to go B because it's that difficult, right? And it's almost the same thing with Mercado, which is another competitive map. Now, Mercado isn't as bad. You can go B. It's just very hard. Like, A is way easier. And people just don't go B very often. Like, on Fortress, I think it might literally be like 99% A, 1% B, like off break. And in Mercado, it's probably like 85% A, 15% B, something like that. Like, I just want to say pro matches because like pubs is different. Like, there could be like some terrible players don't know what they're doing. Even in ranked play, like it's not as coordinated. But like in pro matches, when like people know what they're doing, they're only hitting one bomb site. So that's just immediately like that's a bad S and D map. If you can only go to one of the bomb sites, there's something wrong. But it's just weird to me that they say they're focusing on S and D, but half the competitive maps that we have are terrible for S and D. Like how does that make any sense? Like just think about Black Ops Two, right? I bring up Black Ops Two because that's the best competitive COD that we've ever had, right? What were the S and D maps in Black Ops Two? Raid. You could go either bomb site on Raid. Raid might be the best competitive map they've ever made in the history of COD. You have Standoff, where you can hit either bomb site. You have, what was it, Express, where you can hit either bomb site. In Black Ops 2, both of those bombs got planted like quite often on all of those maps. Like, there definitely wasn't any fortresses where it was like 99%, 1%. You know what I mean? Like those were all fair maps. So for them to say, hey, we're focusing on S&D and the bomb site placement and everything, and then we have a map 
that's in competitive that people are playing for millions of dollars for when you can only go to one of the bombs is absurd man like and it's just such an easy fix right like just have the pro players come in for one day scrim on all the s d maps and they would have told you hey these bomb sites suck move them here or you know do something with them whatever but for some reason that is not being done i don't know why i guess the developers think because they made the game they are better at it than people who play it every single day for 12 hours a day and get paid money to do so like that's kind of crazy man like i promise you there's no developer out there that knows more about call of duty than skump or crim or anyone like that i don't think there's any developer out there that knows more about call of duty than i do i can 100 guarantee you i have spent more hours of my life playing call of duty than any call of duty developer that's easily i guarantee you that so just bring in some people that know what they're doing and have them fix your game and let's move on i they probably even do it for free like we all just want the game to be better you know what i mean it's not a crazy concept like this whole interview is just insane to me right because honestly Honestly, I thought they just didn't care about multiplayer. They only care about Warzone, right? And that's another aspect. Actually, let me just mention this. Like 70% of these maps are in Warzone. So for you to say you're designing maps based around S&D domination and TDM, but these maps are all in Warzone. So did you design them first and then put them in Warzone? Or did you design Warzone first and then cut out segments of Warzone and put them in multiplayer? And now you're saying you basing it off S&D, but didn't you just steal it from Warzone? Like which way did that happen? I'd love to to know i don't know if they've ever clarified that but that would be a very contradictory to what they're saying if it was warzone first but like i was saying like i honestly thought they just didn't care about multiplayer that much right but now that i'm hearing that they actually do care about multiplayer and this is their best fucking work that is hilarious man like that's actually insane to me you gotta do better than that bro okay you just gotta do better but to get them to actually listen is the problem you know what i mean so i don't know that's the sad state of things this interview i thought was just very interesting a little eye-opening because i i honestly thought they didn't care but to hear that they do care and this is what they came up with i think that's actually worse right like i'd prefer if you didn't care to hear that you care and this is your best work is actually really depressing man that that's really bad but anyways that's pretty much it for the video y'all let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below other than that thank you guys so much for watching be sure to like rating if you enjoyed subscribe if you're not already follow me on twitter links in the description down below check out my last video if you missed it it was about this girl who made like this ai bot of herself where apparently you spend one dollar a minute to talk to her and she had quite a lot of business and actually speaking on that i believe amaranth is doing the same thing now or is about to come out with there or something i saw some tweet about that and i promise you a lot more people are going to be doing that and that is kind of scary to think about though people are paying money to speak to an ai bot of a girl like that that is quite sad and concerning for society but anyways check that video out if you missed it other than that thank you again for watching have a good day and peace out